Hey y'all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today it is time for a review of the 2021 book by James Colapinto, This Is The Voice. Uh, James Colapinto, longtime writer for The New Yorker. Prior to that, he was a writer for Rolling Stone magazine. He um, has written a couple of best-selling books, um, has written a bunch of interesting articles about a wide variety of different topics. Uh, this, however, is my first exposure to his work. And what's interesting, when you read the background about it, which he lays out very uh, in very detailed fashion in the introduction here, is how the genesis of this book dates back to 20 plus years ago when he was with Rolling Stone. Now I'm going to tie this into the musical angle here. Uh, I guess when Colapinto was a writer, he was approached by none other than Rolling Stone magazine founder Jan Wenner to front a cover band uh, that Wenner was putting together for some sort of social event. <clears throat> And while doing that, Colapinto um, lost his voice. He essentially strained his voice too hard during rehearsals, and he damaged his voice to the point where it ended up affecting him permanently. And if you see interviews with him, um, you can really hear the hoarseness in his voice. He's really lost most of his range and his ability to emote. Um, and the discussions that he has about that and the conversations that he had with, like, um, speech pathologists and vocal professionals, voice coaches, things like that. Um, really, those conversations really inform what we have here in this book. The intent here is to make this book a very comprehensive overview of the voice in all its capacities, in all its qualities. Um, and I wouldn't say, I, I think there's a sort of natural progression in how it uh, expands on itself. It goes from the idea of the voice when you know, you're first born, the idea of kind of babbling as a baby, the idea of baby talk, motherese, as it's also called, and how humans have this incredible ability to learn not just language, but to learn like inflections and the meanings of them. And you take that framework and you just kind of expand it across all these other different areas of life. Uh, of social situations, um, and I think how he does it is, for the most part, fascinating. Um, all this discussion, which is very based in this like genuine biological research about um, the inflections that we use in our voice, something that is very unique to humans. I mean, there's so many things about the human voice that are unique to humans that are not present in any other animals that have the ability to vocalize. Um, <clears throat> it's really interesting stuff and how he is able to tie them into these, I, these conversations about class, about gender, about, um, sexual orientation and how the voice really presents itself as such a defining factor of our identity in all these cases. Um, there's a whole conversation about the idea of dialect, um, about different accents and how people stereotype based off of those. Um, the idea of how someone who is uh, transitioning and, um, you know, goes through like vocal coaching and stuff like that. Um, it, it's, it, it hits all these different factors. I mean, it really is kind of a rapid fire tour through all of these different things. Uh, doesn't really settle on one subject for too long, but it dabbles in everything enough to where you you sort of realize that the voice is something that we take for granted as an innate part of ourselves, and we don't really try to quantify the impact that it has on our daily lives um, and how much of an impact that it has um, is pretty staggering. I will say there was one piece of this book that I was not incredibly crazy about. Towards the end, um, Colapinto kind of transitions this into a story about the voice less in a physical sense, but in a sort of political sense. The voice in the sense of like the author's voice as a persuasive tool. Um, and in doing so, he brings up several different um, topics that are rooted in contemporary politics. He talks a lot about Obama. Um, he talks about Hitler at one point. Um, and then he talks about Donald Trump for quite a while. 
Now, again, this book came out while Trump was still president, I believe, or it was certainly written during that time. And <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, you know, without without getting into any sort of like political bent, because that's not the intent. I think the amount of time he focuses on Trump, again, not the physical voice of him, but on Trump's words being bad, Trump being a bad influence. I don't nitpick on that and say that's a bad thing because I disagree. I don't disagree with what he's saying. I don't think it fits. I think it sticks out like a sore thumb, and I don't think the points that he's making are anything original. Um, you, Sir, you and every other journalist uh, in the country at this point pretty much believed and have shared exactly the sentences that you're saying here about Trump being a menace to society. We know. It does not fit in this book. Um, and when he kind of like moves on from that and transitions into kind of the final part of the book, it just it feels so abrupt. It doesn't feel natural at all to me. So that was a that was something that jarred the flow of the book a significant bit. But looking past that, and I'm sure a lot of people can, um, I think the technical stuff here is so interesting. And again, you know, it, it gives you so many ideas where you can kind of branch out, do your own research investigate further and really just reflect on the importance of the voice and how we emote and how important it is to our personality how integral it is to our personality there's a great quote near the beginning of the book where from the uh, one of the doctors that Colo Pinto saw uh, where he said something along the lines of like if you've lost your voice you've lost part of yourself you're not able to express part of yourself and it's a really powerful thing and um, I know in, in my sense, my personal anecdote is that it probably will inspire me to take better care of my voice. Um, and I think that's a good, a lesson that we could all learn from, frankly, you know, we're only granted one. It only has a finite shelf life, I suppose. Um, so let's protect it. So yeah, it's a good book. Uh, I don't want to steer anyone away from it just because I had one, um, semi major gripe with it, but the stuff that is good here, is very good. Colopinto is a very engaging writer. Um, and yeah, if the human voice interests you, I see no reason why you can't check this out. I should say, by the way, this is, they talk about music, they talk about the idea of singing as being, in a way, like the highest form of expression using the human voice, but it's not the focus here. They don't talk about music a ton. This is really about kind of the idea of spoken word, like I am doing to you, uh, right now. In any case, good book. Check it out. With that, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Tell a friend as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.